Lounge with Travify Academy, where we get to hear from travel industry voices and experts to learn more about their story and also what they see on the horizon for travel professionals. I'm Stephanie Grice, and our guest is Erica Graham, who is owner and operator of Paper Planes and Passports, which is a full service travel agency based in Atlanta, Georgia. So welcome to the lounge, Erica, and thanks for joining us here today. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, I'm so excited too. And I know I just said, I'm so super excited to hear about your story. So let's dive in because I know it's, it's really fascinating and there's just so much to learn from you that I know our travel advisors listening will love and be very helpful <laughs> for them. So the first question to, to start us off here is how did you get started in the travel industry and how did paper planes and passports come to be? Well, um, my husband and I had, we were traveling um, just on our own. Uh, we worked for a healthcare technology company. And so I traveled domestically all over uh, the United States for work. So I kind of got a little bit of the travel bug from that. But then um, my husband works in the international division. And so he was traveling internationally and I was starting to travel with him on some of his business trips. And it happened. Like, I was like, I have to do this. Travel is definitely where my heart is, where my passion is. And I had to figure out a way to make it my everyday life. So we're here at Paper Planes and Passports. <laughs> I love that. That's really cool. And I think that's a lot of stories for most people too, is just like, I love travel and I would love to help other people do that. So where was the, um, the process? Where did it start for creating your own business? Well, it essentially kind of just started organically. Like I said, we were traveling anyway. And so people would ask us all the time, like, how do you travel so much throughout the year? Like these flights cost a lot of money. How are you guys able to do this? Um, and when's the best time to go? So we would always get travel questions. We were able to answer them because we had traveled the world at that point, you know, and it just became easy, became natural. So I was like, well, this is probably the easiest transition from my project management corporate job into the travel business because tra being a travel agent or travel professional is pretty much project management for travel. So it was a nice synergy <laughs> between the two. And I was able to kind of just mesh them together. And I, I wanted to provide an opportunity for more people to be able to travel. Like I said, I got a lot of questions about the expensive flights. I wanted to make travel affordable. Um, and we partnered with another company here in Atlanta that provides financing for flights, um, which at the time was kind of unheard of um, to be able to put a down payment down for a portion of the flight and then make pay that locks in the price and then they can make payments over time so that they, you can effectively budget, um, which would allow you to be able to travel more throughout the year because you know exactly how much you're going to spend and you don't have to drop those big lump sums on flights, hotels and activities all at the same time. So wanted to make travel affordable, wanted to make it easy for people to be able to travel and budget effectively. Um, we're all about um, finances and being, conscious about your finances, figuring out the best ways to spend your, to maximize your dollars um, within your day-to-day -day life and travel. So here we are. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. That's awesome. You don't really hear that often about, um, you know, tying in like the finances to the travel and, you know, so that's, that's awesome. That's really important. And I, I've heard of the financing before, but that is something that's still, I feel like probably pretty new with right, like those flights. It is. Um, there are a few companies out there that do it, um, but I was able to really mold um, this company because they were starting out and I literally, literally found them online and was like, hey, can you work with travel agents? And they were like, you know what? We never thought to do that. So let's see what we can come up with. And, and we ended up being able to tailor our businesses to work for each other, to help each other. And in the grander scheme of things is to help more people travel on a budget effectively. So, yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. And on um, starting your business too, I know a lot of times, a lot of people listening to this too is um, new to the industry and really wants to build up their business. And a lot of people start by going, you know, to like a host agency or finding a consortium to work with. And what was the process like for you or how'd you get started? So I did go with a host agency as well. Um, I figured that would be the 
best way for me to get my feet wet in learning the systems um, and learning the processes and figuring out what works best for me in my business model. So um, I was able to learn from the host agency because I knew eventually I wanted to be a host agent, see, so that I can provide opportunities for other travel agents uh, to learn how to travel. Because, you know, with a host agency, it is um, hard to learn, so to speak. Uh, everybody doesn't learn easily by online learning, online classes, um, as we saw with 2020. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it's even harder for adults to learn online and to, to actually create a whole business structure based off of online classes. So um, I said, well, I'm, I want to create my own host agency and be able to provide easier travel um, for other people, easier systems, easier ways to promote your business without the cookie cutter things that you get from a host agency, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, that's really cool. And so what is, can you tell us more about your host agency, um, how people can find more information, but also what um, you do or things that are different? Um, so yeah, with, with our, well, you can find us at paperplanesandpassports.com, shameless plug. <laughs> um, but uh, there we, I've created our Paper Planes and Passports Academy, where I am able to provide hands-on training. So right now I have a couple agents that have signed up and they are literally with me for a certain amount of hours of the day. And we are, they're shadowing me. They're hearing how I'm talking to the customers, how I'm communicating with them, the follow-up emails that come, what are those processes, what are those steps, and then they're actually going on to host or co-host with me some of our hosted group trips. Um, that's another part of the business that uh, we specialize in uh, is hosting group trips. So um, they, they will be getting kind of a comprehensive hands-on training that will allow them to learn everything start to finish and actually do it because you can learn it online, but if you don't practice it, when's the next time you take that course online and then you don't get a client till like a legit client until maybe two months later, and then you don't even know what to do at that point. So actively having them work on clientele that I already have and able to give them some of my clients uh, to learn and practice with, and then those become their clients going forward. So that is a step-by-step, -step, this is how you do it. So you, you learn it, you get to try it, and then you execute on your own. That's how I learn. It worked for me. So that's, that's the process. And that's how I wanted to train travel agents because that's completely different. You don't get that when you sign up under a host agency. You don't get anybody that's going to teach you how to do something. It's all pretty much online. So that's what definitely makes us different is that hands-on training. Yeah, that's such a good point. Especially we definitely saw that in 2020 of, especially for adults. You kind of, I, when you said that, I was like, that's so true with, um, you know, we're, we're just not used to that. Not that kids are used to it either, but at least they're a little more used to like school and you know, mm -hmm. that, that process. And yeah, mm -hmm. it is. And, and so do you think, um, I'm really curious to see what the future of in the next year or two, um, what it looks like. Do you think that we're going to have a lot new, a lot more new travel agencies and agents starting just because, you know, business is going to, once the economy starts coming, you know, back in action and people start traveling, are you expecting a little bit of a boom from new agents or interest? So during COVID, I really took that time. And I know you said you were going to kind of get to this, but this is a, a very good segue. <laughs> yeah, segue in. Um, literally during COVID, it was um, a bit of a good things and bad things because it was the bad came first, obviously all the cancellations, all the craziness. Um, and then the, the customers freaked out, worried, afraid they weren't going to be able to travel. Um, I was freaked out for my business to see what was even going to take place. Was I going to have a business at the end of this? But um, during that time, I kind of just stuck to my guns and said, you know what? No, we're going to put ourselves in the position because after this, if no one travels in a whole year, we're going to be losing it. And we're going to be ready to get out there and travel the world once all of this calms down or we have a better solution um, to make it safe to travel again. So I was like, let me hunker down. Let me figure out a ways that, ways that I can expand, grow my business, but then get ready and prepared for the rush because 
it's here right now. Even, yeah. even we still don't have complete solutions for the pandemic, but people are traveling again, like a lot. So um, I, I'm putting myself in and put myself in the position during that time to be able to kind of counteract that and, and just offset some of that rush uh, in the beginning. So yeah, I just use that time to structure my business. Um, that comes a part of business growth. You know, um, you as a business owner, we, we, we try to do everything ourselves and you can't, like you just literally can't. And so I wanted to figure out how can I expand my business, but then help others um, get into the industry. So during that time, I kind of tapped into my business side and said, you know what? I want to one, expand my business, but then two, I want to be able to help people do that. So let's create a training. Let's create the rollout. Let's figure out how do we get more people under our agency to be able to pay people. Cause I know a lot of people are out of jobs due to COVID. So let's get some of those people in that want to learn how to travel that want to travel more and teach them how to do this and expand our business at the same time. So yeah. It's working so far. <laughs> yeah, so far. Well, and so much has, I feel like in the last um, just few weeks, there's already been so much momentum coming and there's just, you're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, I think right now, which is just so exciting. There's still unknowns, but you know, I think that's, that's definitely the cool thing about it is it's, it's coming. And I, we've always been wondering about that too, if there'll be a big um, boom of new businesses starting up new um, or a lot of, um, I've heard a lot of stories where travel agents started their business in January of 2020. And so <laughs> unfortunately they had to probably keep working at it, but now it's like the true stuff is coming now. And, and mm -hmm. a question for you here, since you work with a lot of people who are starting their new business or starting, um, you know, working, starting with the host agency. Um, what are some tips that you would think are the most important things for someone new who's starting out that they should make sure that they are prepared for, or basically just anything that you wish that you would have known before you started? Uh, so what I was aware of this when I started in the industry is as a travel agent, and a lot of people don't know this, as a travel agent, you don't get paid until your, until your customers actually travel. It's usually a few weeks after that before you see any dollars come to you. So creating other ways to make money until those people actually travel and until you get paid. So creating other sources of income through your travel business is what I was able to do or through other sources of income. Um, other passive sources of income so that I can still focus on my, on my job, my passion, my travel, but then still not worry about these people aren't, tra I booked this trip in January and they're not traveling until next January. I'm not going to see any money for all the work that I've done in that whole year until maybe February of the next year. So creating ways that you can earn additional income while you're waiting because in the beginning you don't have clientele you don't have trips stacked up month after month or multiple people traveling in one month so then you know it just month after month after month you get paid it doesn't work that way when you're first starting out because you don't have the clientele um so another thing in order to get clientele is utilize social media figure out how to use instagram and facebook those are key to your business. It's free. It's free advertisement. It is the fastest, easiest way for you to reach hundreds of thousands of people at one time by one post. Um, so I'd say know that you're not going to get paid until your people actually travel to create additional means of income so that while you're waiting for those people to actually travel and get paid, you can still get paid. Um, and then learn how to utilize social media because that is your best friend. You will spend a lot of time there. That is where you you have to do the work in social media, um, especially with all the weird algorithms and all the stuff that they keep changing. You have to keep abreast of those changes and be able to adapt and utilize them to your advantage. So I'd say those are probably my top three. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. It's probably a lot more, but <laughs> I know as you get going, you're like, oh, that's important. This is important. And that one. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, yeah. that's why I'd um, go, go to your website and maybe I'll 
they'll have to, they'll get all those other tips in there. (laughs) No, social media is so big too. I have, um, have, which one is your favorite platform to use? And like, which one do you see the most engagement on? Instagram is my favorite. I'm a visual person. So I like pictures. I like videos. Um, I love taking pictures, whether I'm in front of the camera or behind the camera. I I have a, I think a mini photographer in me um, (laughs) as I'm traveling. Um, I love to create content. Um, So for me, Instagram is probably the best place Um, you can have uh, with now with the reels and the stories and you can have a little bit more interaction where which is what you got on Facebook just less wording as Facebook I'm not a, I don't want to read I don't, I don't care about that unless I want to learn something from that post but generally I find Instagram's probably my best friend yeah I could see that I love stories too I've gotten really into it just yeah I, that's where usually I just go there. Like I'm just looking at all the stories and, and Instagram's really good too, about knowing who you're seeing all the time. So then they'll always put those people up, you know, first. So that's a good yeah. point too, with that algorithm is to always be sharing because they, so that way you're always getting pushed to the front and people are yep. seeing you. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and, that, and tr- the reels help that as well. Like that's yeah. the new thing. Like, so it's like, I think it's reels, stories then the grid so what's the grid that's the actual oh so that's just the regular one yeah that's when you post pictures directly to your feed okay so yeah that's like your feed grid yeah that's right Mm -hmm. yeah the reels I've kind of been seen sometimes they just appear and once you get on them it's almost like TikTok where you just can start like scrolling through them Mm -hmm. so yeah I kind of forgot that those are separate from stories so so much stuff you can do pretty cool so much stuff can do a ton of things yeah Uh, you really can (laughs) yeah and so you've still been traveling um haven't you like this past year so where have you been traveling to so uh in November we went to Costa Rica um and we went to Mexico in December and I was just in Miami last week and then we have several group trips coming up so we're going to Morocco in May Colombia in June Greece, if they open up in August. (laughs) And I'm hoping for Bali at the end of the year, but um, there's those two places I'm still waiting for opening information. But yeah, we've definitely been traveling uh, during the pandemic. I felt like I had to get out there and just see what it was like Um, during the pandemic. I was keeping everyone up to date as far as what who was opening how do you get in um what do you need you know to get in what do you need to consider while you're traveling we did my husband and I did several road trips so we kind of figured out you know all right like this is how you road trip during COVID this is how you travel domestically during COVID this is how you travel internationally during COVID so we kind of did all the steps just so that one I could tell my customers, my clients, the people that are listening, watching, um, how they can too. Um, I know it was a scary time during COVID, especially for those people that actively travel. Like I was freaking out because that is my life. That was what I love to do. So not being able to do that was a little bit scary. So I wanted to just keep everyone up to date with those people that wanted to. And I actually had customers that were traveling starting the end of May. They were like, I'm getting the heck out of here. Oh, this place is open. I'm going. (laughs) I know. Well, yeah. Like, well, here we go. Well, and I think also that if we would have known like, oh, by this date, you'll be good. It would have been different too, but it's like, I don't know when it'll be, but I've heard. Yeah. It's like the, that's the the scary part about it. And, um, I heard a lot of agents. So like in our past webinars and stuff, they'll, they've said that if they've been able to travel, they see their sales, it, it helps their business so much because they're able to, I mean, with social media, can live vicariously through you, which is very exciting. See everything mm-hmm. that's up. But everyone always has those questions of like, oh, you can travel here. Like, what does that look like? What do I have? What would I have to do? And, you know, it just, it makes, it normalizes, you know, like it's still happening. Travel is still out there and you can do it in a safe way. So it that's is. cool. Yeah, that, that was definitely one of the things I wanted to tell people, like you still can do this. You just 
have to be a bit more conscious. You can't get comfortable, you know, when you're traveling, you're, or when you're around other people, you're drinking, which means you take your mask off for extended periods of time and then you start randomly talking to strangers. So just being a, more aware of what you're doing and, and if you're going to drink, I even made a couple posts. If you're going to be out and about while traveling and you're going to drink, I would suggest drinking in your area not at a bar which a lot of bars weren't open but the ones that were at hotels and stuff like that there were people sitting around having conversations casually and I was like oh yeah nope I'm not doing that <laughs> I'm going to <laughs> taking my drink and running because I would start talking to people so um yeah just being more conscious and aware of of your of your actions and what you're doing uh while you're traveling during the pandemic yeah. yeah. And I, that's exactly what I've always said too. I'm like, I can make it work, but the problem is, is just, yeah, the socializing part of where you start to let your guard down and you, and there's so many times where I have forgotten that there's like, this is happening. Cause if you just start getting, even when you're even just with your family or friends and yeah. you're sitting at a table and you're like, Oh yeah, I guess I, if you have to go up to get to the bathroom, you need to put your mask on. You kind of forget that stuff. Like yeah. it's crazy yeah. how quick it goes. Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. And where's, where are you headed next? Um, well, we have Morocco is in May. I'll, I'll okay. probably fly something else in there in a, towards the end of April, but just because I have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I have to go somewhere. Um, yeah. So yeah, just, um, but definitely we have a group of nine people going to Morocco in May. And then I have a large group in um, June that's going to Colombia. That so is really cool. I'm going to be excited about the larger group. Um, just it's going to be about 40 people. So um, just arranging everything, the COVID testing, just making sure we have a place to go because you have to get tested to come back into the United States. So I've actually been working with um, government agency type of uh, places that will do COVID testing remotely, they'll come to your hotel. So for us with this group of 40 people in Colombia, I was like, how am I gonna drag 40 people to a clinic to get COVID tested? So um, I actually found some place that would actually come to us and do our testing in the hotel. So stuff like that has, uh, can just change the way we travel. We have to think a bit more farther in advance. There's, you know, you have to book, um, your activities further in advance because they have limited amounts of, you know, slots available now because you can't have a uh, total capacity, things like that. So just thinking about all of those things in advance and, and planning ahead is, is critical to having an awesome vacation and to have one to go without a hitch, you know, because one little thing could just off track everything. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And especially with, um, ne yeah, now as we start to get into things, that's, that's really cool. And, and not to change the direction of the conversation, but I'm curious about with, um, your group travels. So this is something that I think is really, it, it was getting really popular, um, that we were seeing a lot, um, before COVID. And so I think it's going to be after as well, um, with group trips. So have you always planned doing those and are those kind of a game changer for your business? And are, would you recommend people, um, you know, doing group trips? That is actually my niche um, is the group trips like that is where we started that was that was what that's kind of like what we're known for is our hosted group trips. Um, I definitely recommend those because those are that's a way that you can offset your 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 income because you know you have these group trips planned, you can get the income for those before you actually travel for some portions of the trip, if you do it correctly, um, you can see some of that money up front versus waiting until everyone travels like with a, a booking a, a normal vacation um, for someone else. So um, I definitely recommend it. It definitely, rec that is, like I said, a way that you can um, add additional income. That is another revenue stream within your business um, is the group trips. Um, and then also digital um, information like itineraries. Um, you can sell itineraries, you can do trainings, you can um, create courses, online courses, different things like that that have to do with travel. Those are also additional streams of revenue within the travel business. Um, another good one a lot of people don't know about is uh, Turo. So we have another vehicle and that is a, so we have a rental car 
under our travel business that I don't have to market. I don't have to promote. All I have to do is make sure that our vehicle is clean, has gas and maintained, and we have uh, to, to get it back and forth, time to get it back and forth to each client. So that's creating additional revenue that I don't have to market. I don't have to advertise. I don't have to do anything, but have the vehicle and have it ready for the next guest. Wow. That's cool. I've never heard of that before. Yeah. Have you heard of Turo at all? Huh? Okay. So Turo is like a rental car business. It's like a, it's like Airbnb for cars. Yeah. That's cool. So you, you rent out your vehicle to people. Um, We live right by the airport in Atlanta. So for us, we're always booked because people are coming in and out. And now because of COVID, a lot of the rental car companies don't have a lot of cars. Like that has been a big thing in a lot of places I've heard that we can never get a rental car. So Turo is now the the next option for that. So, and that's easy uh, to, to add, you can add to your fleet. So like we have one vehicle now and looking for another one. And then you can just always keep adding vehicles as long as you can manage them and make get them to where they need to be and communicate with your clients effectively that's easy money because you don't have to market it that's just something I don't have to really do yeah that's really fascinating it is it's like uber meets airbnb like yeah meets something new like that's Oh, that's really cool. I like that. Those are great ideas for just, you know, how to supplement that income. And especially right now, because I'm sure there's um, a lot of people that are planning. What we've seen at Travify is there's a lot of people starting to plan um, proposals and quotes, but a lot of those trips are either for the end of this year or next year, next summer of 2022. So, you know, you won't get paid yet. So finding ways to jumpstart your business back again is probably going to be really vital for many people. So that's really cool. And Turo is a good thing if you don't have to go to an office. I mean, I work from home. If I'm not traveling, I'm at home. So um, I can manage my schedule easy enough to be able to, you know, make sure that I get the vehicles back, maintenance, serviced, um, cleaned, and all of those things for the next guest. So um, and a lot of them pick us, pick up. I don't have to drive them. So, you know, a lot of them come and actually pick up the vehicle. I've had people rent out the vehicle for a whole month. So I didn't have to do anything for a whole month, but collect. (laughs) That is awesome. So yeah, those are just simple ways, uh, additional ways that you can earn income while you're waiting for your people to travel and then to get paid. Yeah. I love that. That's really cool. Well, thank you for sharing all of that. I, I like yeah. that. And those are, those are the questions that I had. I know I got off topic with some of those cause it's just so fascinating, uh, oh, but before right. I move into our rapid fire, is there anything else that um, we didn't get to cover that we wanted to, I don't know if there was. Um, I think so. Yeah. I think, I think we got just about everything. Yeah. Um, we- yeah. I really just wanted everyone to hear like your um, story and everything. Cause it's, it's really cool. I just love it. And it's so, so relatable. You know, everyone loves travel in this industry and it's make a career out of it is so cool. So yeah, yeah that is awesome. I love that. Definitely and I, living the, my best life and living in my wildest dreams right now. This is something that I, I dreamed about for a long time. Um, as my husband and I were traveling together, I was like, there has to be a way as we would always travel by ourselves and we wanted more of our friends to, but they have to work. They either have kids or there's, you know, just always something where we all couldn't get together. And I was like, but I want to travel with other people too. So yeah. I kind of got to, to fuel my fire as far as traveling with new people and different people, but then also giving them the opportunity to see some of these places because one of the things I hear I hear that a lot of people don't have people to travel with so they don't travel at all if you're single or you're you you don't have or friends that can travel or family that can travel with you they're afraid to travel by themselves so our group trips kind of fill that void we create everything for you we put the packages together you don't have to do anything but literally pay your deposit make your monthly payments pack your bags, show up and have an amazing time because everything is done for you. You're with experienced travelers because we are there hosting those trips and you don't have to worry about anything. You're not, you don't worry about your safety or traveling by yourself. So that has opened up the doors and given a lot of people the opportunity that don't have anyone to travel with, to travel with um, like-minded individuals and they can still see the world. 
Yeah, that's and such on a, a budget. <laughs> yes, and on a budget. Yeah, that's really cool because you can always, um, you know, go to like I'm one that's come in mind is like Kentucky and stuff like that. But those are still you don't really know, like you don't know who your tour guide is going to be or who. So working with someone like you, who like you get to know, like if I were working with you, I'd get to know you, and mm-hmm. I'd probably be able to get an insight on who else is going, you know, mm-hmm. and start to. So that's cool. I I really like that. That's that's a neat idea. Yeah. Yeah, that was, it was just something I think just came out of necessity for us. Yeah, no, it makes so much sense. Yeah, that's really cool. And um, yeah, I'm going to have to go check out your group trips. I saw some of them on your website because I love it. If you go to um, her website, you can see them. And what's that website again? Paperplanesandpassports.com. There it is. A little (laughs) plug again. Uh, Because yeah, because if you go, you'll see those trips. So you can see what's going on, which is really cool. Um, But okay. My favorite part, Uh rapid fire questions. They're always the best. And if you need to pass on anything, just let me know. We can come back to it, (laughs) but they should be pretty easy though. All right. I'm usually quick on my feet. So let's go. Yes. (laughs) All right. Here we go. First question. What is your favorite travel movie? Planes, trains, and automobiles. Nice. (laughs) It's a throwback. (laughs) I know. I was like, I can't visualize it. I know I've heard it. It's a long time ago. And I think I like that movie a lot just simply because it, it definitely, it had all a plane, trains and automobiles. (laughs) I mean, um, and I literally just had this conversation with somebody yesterday, one of my clients, she wants to go to Martha's Vineyard and to get to Martha's Vineyard. If you fly into Boston, you have to take a plane, a shuttle bus and a ferry just to get to Martha's Vineyard. Yep. So we talked about (laughs) that very same topic came up yesterday. I was like, it's literally like the movie Plane, Trains, and Automobiles getting to Martha's Vineyard. So yes. um, Yeah, it's, I think that one uh, for me does it just simply because it's all about getting from one place to another, no matter Mm -hmm. what means of transportation that you take. That's awesome. That reminds me of Rome to Rio. I'm obsessed with Rome to Rio because I always, I just like to see like what thing, what different ways you can get places sometimes. Mm-hmm. So that's always a fun, like, yeah, you'll see the most random and you're like, oh, I could take a city bus and then I get off, get on a train and then yeah, on a ferry. So it's just, yeah, yeah things you never think of sometimes. Yeah, that's definitely. <laughs> I like it. Um, okay. So the next question is, what is your favorite destination you've traveled to? I know it's going to be a hard one. This is always the hardest one. I would have okay, to say. so out of so far 49 countries, I think my ultimate, all right, I'll say so Egypt because um, as a kid, as a child, um, I used to go to an Egyptian hairdresser and he used to bring me things from Egypt when he went home. So I literally to this day still have it's like three sand pyramids that he brought back for me. I have a, a necklace, a hieroglyphics necklace. Um, so I always dreamed of going to that place. It's, I thought it was so magical. He would show me pictures. He'd speak Arabic to me. So like, it was like, I have to go there once in my lifetime. And that was actually one of our first group trips that we hosted was to Egypt. So I I spent my 35th birthday there. So it was very special to me. Um, My best friend came, um, some other friends, people that I know, associates came along. So for me that, and just to walk into those structures that had been there for ever and to see the hieroglyphics still on the walls, like it was amazing to me. It it absolutely blew my mind. And um, I think I got chills and and almost cried when I (laughs) was inside of there. I believe it because yeah. Oh, I, I watched so many shows like on the Smithsonian channel about Egypt. I cannot get enough. <laughs> it's it's yeah. fascinating. And isn't Egypt one of the countries that you can travel to right now too? I think it's been open for, so I've been hearing yeah. a lot of people going there. Yeah. It's been open for, for quite a while. Um, and it's just so much history and, and culture mm-hmm. there. Um, I learned, I, I learned so much when I went to Egypt about the various, uh, religions and how they all coexist together. I was just blown away by how, um, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess the level of respect that they all have for each other um, and 
and just how they all work together to reach a common goal, whether, you know, it is practicing their various religions and, and different religions work together and how they all, like someone's on Ramadan and, and they respect that they can't eat meat or they, they can't eat certain things. And so they won't do it around them. And, and they actually like respect that. And so hearing some of those things and learning about this and some of the things that we hear on the news about Egypt and, and about just some of the, a lot of the places in Africa, how violent it is and going there, I was like, huh, no way. It's more violent in Atlanta and Chicago even, you know, sometimes yeah. or in the United States and places. So um, it just changed my perspective on, on travel. Yeah. completely I think that Egypt trip changed my life <laughs> that is really cool I was gonna say yeah that's travel right there it's just immersing and, and seeing and I love that that's really cool you have sold me I'm going to Egypt at some point um, <laughs> on, I already I was on the it. list but it moved up yeah. oh so excited that's that's cool um okay so another question here is what is the best meal you've ever had while traveling mm. I know this is another really hard one so many good meals Oh man. Um, okay. So it'd have to be a kebab. Um, Amsterdam is one of my, it's probably my second favorite place on the planet and they make really awesome kebabs and Belgian waffles. Um, and during our trip to Amsterdam, we took a day trip to Belgium and we got Belgian waffles waffles like from Belgium and the kebabs that they make in Amsterdam are just amazing so I would literally fly we'll we'll schedule a long layover in Amsterdam just so that we have enough time to get out of the airport go get a kebab some Belgian waffles and walk around the city for a little while and then go back to the airport just because <laughs> yeah you're there you have to you're all the way across yeah, the world. You have yeah. to do it. Yeah. No, I like that. that so is I find one. myself craving. I definitely find myself craving um, the kebabs. I haven't found anyone that any place that makes them as good as they do. Other than my husband, he's probably mastered them at this point. <laughs> oh, nice. That's yeah, so awesome. I'm an in-house kebab maker now. <laughs> I love that. No, oh, that's awesome. Okay. So two more questions here. Well, uh, second to last one is what is the last great book or article that you read? Um, actually I'm looking <laughs> here. Uh, it's called closing the deal. Yeah. I, that sounds familiar. Um, I'll have to, I think that's the name of it, but it, it is a, a lady. It's not necessarily travel related. However, I really got a good perspective on being a businesswoman. Like as a travel agent, you get so mixed up in doing the day-to-day, -day, the everyday, the running your business that you forget that you are an owner. Like, yeah. and you have to treat yourself as such. Um, so I think that helped me change my perspective and and also help me get to the point where you know what I am CEO and I need to put the right people in place I need to teach people my craft so that I can really get to the higher level business things that I want to do and execute execute and grow my business and my brand I can't do that if I'm in the mud every day doing everything under the planet to keep my business running so um that really helped me um, just say, you know what? We have to expand. We have to grow. It's going to be hard, um, but you have to start treating yourself as the owner and you have to put the right people in place to help you grow. Um, and I think I was always afraid to do that. Just, am I going to be good enough? Am I going to be good enough to train somebody to do what I know how to do. Um, just, I think that helped eliminate some of that fear. And I said, you know what, I've got to do this in order for me to elevate and take my business to the next level, this has to be done. So um, I think that was, that was probably the one that, that got me good. 
Yeah, that's awesome. It just, it hits you right in the spot. Is that, it's such an important reminder that we talk about that too, some on um, some of the webinars we do just about, you know, you get into this because you love traveling and you want to help people travel, but it's also a business at the end of the day. So you have to make sure you're running it as a business. And, you know, so that's really good reminders. So that's, that sounds like a really good book. Everyone put it on your list. <laughs> I like it. Okay, perfect. Um, okay. So last question. My personal favorite question is what is the craziest thing that's ever happened to you while traveling? Ooh, the craziest thing. Um, okay. So I was, my husband was in China for a business trip and I joined him. He was supposed to come home for my birthday and he ended up having to stay to finish the deal. So he literally text messaged me and was like, hey, you need to go get a visa and you need to get to China in the next 48 hours. Oh and I'm my like, gosh. What? <laughs> We're going to China? <laughs> so I get there and I was a part of this huge business meeting. I was a part of this huge business, business dinner. And I learned at that dinner that you it's very disrespectful to not eat the things that you were offered and you know in China they eat some weird things that's exactly what I was kind of <laughs> oh, no. so I had to eat a fish's swim bladder which is the part of the fish that keeps the buoyancy of the fish it was pretty good um, yeah I was but, like if you, as long as you don't know what you're eating maybe it's really delicious yeah but I think for me it was it was really just uh just having to do it because it was disrespectful, you know, and it was just like, I can't be disrespectful to these people. So I have to yeah. eat this. And I wanted to do it um, because, you know, I just, I, I, it had to be done. It was something that I think I had to charge the game and just say, this is a part of life and you got to do it. Yeah. Um, that, and then also while we were in China, my husband was literally mobbed on the great wall of China because he is, 6'2 and he wears a size 12 shoe so everyone thought he was an athlete and a celebrity and people kept taking pictures we couldn't even enjoy the great wall of china oh because so many people wanted to take pictures with him and a guy you know how you someone asked you to take a picture and you you grab the person you're with and you get in the picture with them well this guy he was like no i don't want her and he literally pushed me out of the picture he's like i just want him oh my gosh so okay. I thought that was weird. It was several weird things that happened in China for me. Um, people wanting to touch, women wanted to touch my face. They wanted to touch my hair just simply because you don't see very, Af very many African-Americans in person in China. If you do, especially uh, for those people that are coming from some of those outlining territories, they may not have cable. They may not have television. So they may yeah. not have seen an African-American woman. So, wow, yeah. and I have a slender face and that is a sign of beauty in the Chinese culture. Huh. So that um, a lot of people want to touch my face. A lot of people want to touch my hair. I thought that was weird, but um, I, once I figured it out, I asked uh, one of my husband's business partner, like, what is going on? Why are these people trying to touch me? <laughs> and she explained, and I was like, oh, okay. It, you know, I mean, it's, it's, did it's you feel like that. a celebrity? Like you're kind of like, ooh. Um, at times, just be, simply because like we couldn't go anywhere without people trying to take pictures of us. And yeah. I, I, I gathered that that's how a celebrity feels every time they go outside because everyone wants to capture their photo or take a picture with them. So a little bit, um, but it was, it was just interesting to have people walk up to you randomly and start speaking Chinese or Mandarin to you. Yeah. And you're, you're like, what? <laughs> So I think yeah. I think China definitely opened my eyes to a lot of uh, cultural differences as well as uh, just being into weird situations. <laughs> yeah, and just kind of rolling with it. Like you're like, oh, okay, here we go. Well, yeah. that's again back to like Egypt. Travel changes lives. Like it changes everything, perspectives, and yes, so yeah, that's that's wow, that's really fascinating. That's, what, that's <laughs> just really tall man. Like, oh my gosh, is this some? That's funny. Yeah, um, it's but, weird that people just walk up to you and like, start wanting what? to touch you. And I'm like, don't touch my yeah, face. I don't see, know that where your hands been. 
Yeah, that would be, well, especially now after like COVID, I think we're really going to notice it now. I feel like we've already started to notice, like I've noticed how many handles or like doorknobs I touch and I've Mm -hmm. never thought that before. And Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that'll be interesting if you go back there and like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. You can't catch me anymore. (laughs) No, no, there was a pandemic. Cannot do that. Yeah. (laughs) No, no, no. No. (laughs) No, Well, thank you so much for sharing all of that. Um, all those crazy stories and, um, just really cool. I I love the conversation and thank you everyone too, for tuning into this episode of the lounge with Travify Academy. And thanks again to our special guest, Erica, for joining us here today and be sure to subscribe to our podcast or subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the latest episodes, but we hope you enjoyed this conversation today and join us again but for now stay safe and we'll catch you on the next flight